Hi everyone, welcome to the latest developer blog video about Democracy 4, which is currently in development. I am Cliff Harris, or Cliffski if you like. I am uh, the programmer, one of the programmers and one of the, one of the designers of the game. Um, talking about what we've done in the last two weeks, we didn't do a video last week. Um, something you might notice that I forgot to put down in my list of stuff to talk about this this week is I broke something that Jeff has to fix. Look, the pound symbol has become a question mark. I don't know how I broke it, but it's on the, <laughs> it's on the list of stuff Jeff has to fix that I've screwed up. Anyway, um, there's quite a, quite a bunch of stuff that we've been doing in the last two weeks. Uh, so I'm just going to kind of like run through all of them. Um, you've seen one of them already. If you look at this, um, these lines used to just appear, like in Democracy 3, they just appear. They're the connections between things showing what affects what. Um, and now they animate, they go from one direction to the other to kind of show you um, where that effect is going. I mean, you can see anyway, because the little arrows, but I thought this was, this was quite nice um, to put in. So I put that in. Um, also, if, if they go here, they actually go to the, to the end of the um, item rather than they used to go to the middle. And we thought, oh, that looks awful. We'll make it to the end. I'm not so sure now, actually. I don't know whether or not that is. It's okay when it's like that, and you've got things going all that distance. But when you go over here, I don't know. I don't know. I think it is better, actually. Anyway, I like this little little animation thing we've got going on. And the frame rate should be higher than this, actually. I know it's 200, 300 frames a second, but um, it's because I'm running it from within Visual Studio, which I shouldn't be, because it slows it down a little bit. Um, I forgot. Anyway, so uh, so that's a new thing. Um, there's some new sound effects that have gone in, but I won't go to all the, 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 the tedium of, of triggering those events. Um, but they're in. I uh, got around to doing that. Um, we have a new bit of UI that I will show you here. This. Um, this is stuff that has changed since you uh, started the game, basically. Um, and what it used to be was like a grid grid of, of items showing you each individual simulation value or statistic if you like and how much it had changed with a number with a little green up or down arrow and, and it wasn't and although it's sorted by how significant they were I don't think it was a particularly good bit of design because it was like the easiest thing to do and it wasn't very visual so like looking at this I can see what have we done since we took power or came to power i don't know um business confidence massively up veganism up a bit poor earnings up a little bit the rest is fairly minor i'm not even bothering to show you stuff that hasn't changed or that has changed by less than one percent um i might change that to, to, to 0.1 percent actually anyway um i think this is much better i need to make it so it reanimates every time you touch that because i love i love me a bit of animation um, anyway, I think this is way better than um, than what we used to have, and um, and yeah, you can you, you know you can click on these things and go to them. Um, although that should then blur. Oh, see, there's a little bug there, a little tiny bug, um, sort of. Uh, so that's new. Um, you might notice this down here is throbbing. Obesity is throbbing. We have throbbing obesity. We should see a doctor. Um, that means that this is not only a situation; it's really bad. It's up there, right? Um, if I look at the other situations, they're not quite so bad. That one's probably just under the threshold, actually. That one's barely triggered. So, um, yeah, uh, from now on, if you've got a situation that's really bad, it's going to, like, pulse to remind you that you realise this is a really um, severe case um, of obesity compared to these other things that are quite minor uh, cases. Um, so that's, um, that's in, that's new. Um, I've got a really exciting thing. I, I kind of, I don't want to make it like a two minute video and rush through them, but um, but I'm very excited about this thing. So, <clears throat> you may remember if you've played Democracy 3, when you go here, you have voter types, focus groups, uh, changes, and then policies, and then compass. Um, and what policies used to show, is it used to show you another one of these tedious grids of everything in the game in this case it was policy policies and how popular they are and we used to start with the most popular and then go through like the gray ones to to to, to the bottom ones um, and that was rubbish and i've now got a better system of doing it while i'm here i will point out how how this stuff actually works um 
Green is good, red is bad, grey is... Dunno, like it depends who you are, what you think. So like, veganism is up, right? Now, if, it's, if you're a vegan or vegetarian playing the game or whatever, um, you may think, yeah, well, excellent, excellent. I've increased veganism, which is a good thing. Um, if you're really concerned about climate change, uh, you may think that is a really good thing because it will reduce emissions. Uh, and I think it does, yeah, it does reduce emissions. Um, but we are really trying to avoid making value judgments in the game. Um, tourism going down is, is I, I, I think, a bad thing. Tourism is, is almost always a good thing unless it's environmentally destructive in some way. It's hard to, hard to be sure on that. Um, like if this was me deciding with my value system, I would say oil demand going down, fab, because I'm an environmentalist. Internet currency adoption going down, fab, because I'm not really into Bitcoin and stuff like that, because it's environmentally destructive actually. Actually, we really need to make that affect CO2, don't we? Oh my God. Um, I know it depends on what kind of coin. Um, but for example, veganism going up. Yeah, you might think veganism going up. Well, obviously that's a good thing. Not if you're a dairy farmer. It's a really bad thing in that case. Um, not if you're a butcher. Okay, it's bad. So um, I don't want to make a value judgment unless it's really obvious. Most people, most sane people would say business confidence going up is a really good thing because it will uh, result in investment and, and the boost the economy. Anyway, anyway, enough of that. So there used to be a thing here called policies showing you how popular policies are. And each policy does have a popularity. If you click on a policy here, the popularity with voters. Income tax is sort of like mm, fairly popular. You know, socialists like it, capitalists don't like it. The middle class really hate paying it. So, because um, a lot of the burden of, of an income tax tends to fall on the middle class. Anyway, so there is popularity. So how do we display that? Oh, I'm so excited. I'm so excited about this. Because um, you know we had this thing where you could just look at the value of something, so everything is sized by its value. You could then look at the finances. I've edited this slightly so that we almost sort of fade out stuff that has no finances, because finances only applies to situation and policies. So income tax brings in a lot, sales tax brings in a fair amount, a lot goes on pensions, hardly anything goes on whatever that is. The witness protection program doesn't cost a lot. Um, Anyway, so, so we have value, we have finances, we have influence, which is an interesting one, which kind of weights um, the impact that each, um, each object has on other objects, um, which I, th I think is quite interesting. For example, a lot of people forget about car usage, but a lot of things influence it, it influences a lot of things. It's, it's, it's a fairly major thing. Um, anyway, um, and, and then we have like a weighted thing, which is the default and what I leave it on generally, which is it takes into account the value, the influence and the finances and it comes to a kind of like composite view that is based on kind of how much it thinks you should be paying attention to this item. This frame rate is not right by the way because I don't have I don't have the latest check-in from Jeff that speeds things up and it's also being video captured and it's also running within Visual Studio. It's way faster than this, okay, it's way better. Anyway, so look how exciting, drum roll, I've added a new one, policy popularity, boom. Right, so everything that isn't a policy has been kind of greyed out a little bit, it's kind of like alpha out in the background. And this is how popular your policies are. Big is very, small is not much, green is popular, red is unpopular. So this policy here, road building, yeah, 59%. So people aren't particularly strongly one way or the other. Um, this one here, prisoner tagging, incredibly unpopular. Um, it seems like conservatives aren't particularly in favour of it, but liberals really hate it. Um, and I think we probably have a lot of liberals. Look, we're a very liberal society. No wonder we hate prisoner tagging, the intelligence services, handgun laws, CCTV cameras. We don't like a lot of this law and order stuff. Um, so, so it's red. And some stuff here is, is only like slightly controversial. So that's red, but it's small, which means it's unpopular, but only a bit. If we check there, 50% is absolutely on the, on the kind of line there. Disability benefit, 42%. Um, so really what you want is everything to, to, to kind of um, be popular, which will never happen. But this is just one way of looking at why are people angry? It's one way of doing it. So you can look at these things, 
um, and sort of think, oh, yeah. It's a way of looking at all of this in one go. And our philosophy has been, if you can put this on the main screen, put it on the main screen because, um, you know, that makes a lot more sense. Anyway, I really like that. I really think that's so much better. Um, it will have hotkeys as well for that. I haven't got them yet. Uh, so that's a new thing. We have some new policies that I can't remember if I talked about all of them last week. So I'm going to, uh, two weeks ago. So I'm going to bore you and talk, talk about them very briefly. Just go through them. Um, so some are law and order. I don't know if I mentioned these last time, but there were three law and order things um, that we had. There's a lot of really brutal law and order things if you want them. Rubber bullets, bounce, bounce. Um, what do you think of my rubber bullet icon? Um, sometimes they're called plastic bullets. I don't know if, if I mentioned it last last uh, last video. I'm sorry, um, but uh, this is something that's been used in the UK. Uh, it's used in a few countries, I think. Um, I think sometimes they call them baton rounds. It's kind of like shooting people with a big lump of plastic that kind of might break a rib or something, but it won't kill. It it can kill. Um, it's kind of like a, a, a long range taser, really, um, and used in like riot control and stuff like that. A um, bit controversial, really, because it can kill. Um, but it's basically how do you disperse a crowd um, without shooting them if nothing else is going to work. Um, and on, on that theme, um, we have tear gas. I mean, it's a similar thing, really. Tear gas c can really screw people up, um, but it disperses crowds. So, yeah, it's not a particularly popular thing. Um, something else we have is water cannons. These are all like riot control systems. Um, water cannons were, were famously sort of bought by um, the Mayor of London. And I think we, there was never permission to use them. So they're a waste of money or something. And there's some political controversy about it. Um, so, yeah, you've probably heard of these things. Like r rubber bullets is the thing that I think is out of favour. People tend to use tear gas these days. <laughs> that's the choice of the authoritarian regime anyway these are all new policies ish um i think um we do have another one um is it an economy carbon capture and storage what do you think Doo -doo. i might have meant did i mention it last week i really hope i didn't um i don't think i did um anyway yeah th this is basically the way that you deal with climate change emissions carbon emissions um, if you don't actually want to change anything, um, it's a, I think it's a bit of a get, a bit of a bit of a sort of it's very expensive way of dealing with it. Um, and basically, you compress. You use a lot of the power from a power station that is generating to compress um, the emissions and, and like store them. And you can store them it's like rocks and diamonds and things. Um, anyway, it's in there because it is a policy that people talk about. I, I don't think it's a particularly good system um one of the other uh, ways of doing it is like direct air storage which um uh, people talk about where basically you get like it looks like giant vacuum cleaners like stuck in the air that like suck air through it and, and take out um the co2 um it's, it's very expensive compared to just planting trees or like buying electric cars or something it, it, it's very expensive but you can do that without changing behavior um so I, I you know it's it's a policy you know it's in the game and we'll all argue about how you know how it should work um another one is is in here somewhere blah 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 payroll tax what's payroll tax um it's really one of the stupidest ideas ever but it uh, most every country has it uh, we have it here um and we call it national insurance and it's even weirder in the uk because in the uk national insurance there's loads of different sections to it there's class d and class something else i don't know um it's very complicated so if you're an employee some of your salary is taken away and uh, as a tax called national insurance um and supposedly that pays for like the welfare state but it doesn't it all goes into the same kind of you know it, the, the government just takes it um but additionally, the employer pays national insurance for you on the basis of the fact that they employed you. So it's kind of split between um, the company paying it and the individual paying it. Um, what we're looking at here is just the employer contribution. So um, 
uh, if the employee contribution goes up, we're just reflecting that in income tax in the game to, to simplify things. Um, so yeah, a payroll tax is basically a tax on employing people. Um, it's quite common around the world. And it's, it doesn't make any sense because by all means tax a company's profits, please tax a company's profits um, and, and, and you know tax the employees. But, but if you're, taxation is a disincentive to do a thing. So why you would tax employment, um, it's basically something that just nudges everyone towards automation because you can hire a, hire a person to do something and pay tax on the fact that you've hired them and pay them a salary. Or you can have a one-off capital payment to buy a robot that will work forever and never go on strike and you don't have to pay payroll tax. It's crazy. Uh, anyway, um, it's a bit of an outdated thing. Um, it will be in the game partly because a lot of countries have it, so we have to put it in at the start. Uh, and obviously if you're going to get rid of it, um, which I think uh, most people would, if you're going to get rid of it, then um, you need to replace the income with something else. Anyway, so that's in. So, loads of things in. Um, I love this thing. I've also broken, I've broken drop down lists as well. <laughs> I need to fix that today. Fix drop down lists, do blog video. This is today and, and some other, some other businessy stuff. Um, so I can't show you this in, in the other mode. So um, yeah, I hope you like, like the stuff that we've changed. Um, I, I, I think it makes a big difference. I like all this. I like being able to look at different views of, of stuff. Um, in the game. Um, I think I may only do these videos every two weeks because um, there's a lot of like behind the scenes stuff that means that we don't have that much visual stuff or that much stuff to talk about um, every single week. Um, so I'd rather do videos that people really liked that were kind of um, every two weeks. I don't know, it, it, it depends how, how much we catch up. Everything's in a bit of a, um, a, a kind of weird setup at the moment because uh, this, co this country, the UK, um, is in lockdown because of the virus. Doesn't make any difference to me because I'm always at home anyway. Um, but it does to other people. So um, so who knows? Who knows what's going on? By the way, I didn't mention it last time, but we were going to appear at the Rezd show. That show has been postponed, um, and I don't think we can make um, the new day. Um, so uh, I'm trying to cancel that. So that so uh, no, we won't be at that. Which is a pain because I've got loads of badges. I've got so many badges and. Um, and like leaflets and t I should have been wearing a Democracy 4 t-shirt actually I didn't uh, think of it anyway this is Democracy 4 it's in development uh, it's coming out this year at least in early access this year um, if, if not completely um, anyway I'm Cliff uh, Positive Tech Games blah 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 please like and subscribe blah 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 uh, thank you for watching and I'll see you probably in two weeks